tonight I wanted to talk about how good God is and in the light of him being a good father and providing for us all the things that we need. When I stepped into prison ministry in 2013, it was a place that I never saw myself going or being sent by God. I knew that the Lord had put on my heart to start this magazine, Victorious Living. I had no idea why other than to, I was called to tell people's story. And so more Monday for me is about sharing what God is teaching me so that you can have more in life. And if there's one person that has taught me how to have more in life, it has been my friend Jack Murphy. And Jack Murphy passed away Saturday on September 12, 2020. And I had the privilege and the honor of knowing Jack for many years. I met him uh, not as long as a lot of my friends in prison ministry had the privilege of knowing him, but I met him in 2014, just a few months after I had gone into prison for the first time. And I met this larger than life man, just someone that when God made him, he didn't just break the mold once, he broke the mold twice. There's, I've never met anybody like Jack Murphy in my entire life, Murph the Surf, as he, he was known to many of us. But God immediately put Jack in my life, and he said, learn from him. I put him in your life, learn from him. And can I just say that since 2014, I've been drinking from a fire hydrant. Every time that I would be with Jack, I just would remember those words from the God that he said, I've put this man in your life, learn from him. And so when I was around Jack, I just tried to keep my mouth shut, which was easy because Jack's a talker. And if you know Jack, you know what I'm talking about. He was never uh, missing a story. And his stories got grander every time. And he could entertain and you could you could be at a banquet. And he could talk for an hour and a half and supposed to have had a 20-minute slot. And you would just be going, oh, my gosh, I could sit here all night. You know, I remember after our banquet here in North Carolina and Jack went on for over an hour and my husband's like, I could have listened to him all night because he had so many stories, just amazing God stories. And, and of course, everybody always wanted to ask him about his jewel heist. And back in, um, I think it was 64, um, I had some notes here. He pulled off the largest jewel heist in American history. And the reason he's called Murph the Surf is because Jack Murphy is also in the Surfing Hall of Fame. So we just really hit it off because he was all about some water sports. He loves fast boats. He loves fast cars. He loves engines. He loves sports. He's just accomplished in so many ways. And I look at Jack and I see a life that has so much potential, so much talent, but it was all going in the wrong place for many years. And he'll be the first to tell you that. It was going toward a life of crime. It was going toward a fast life. And it caught up with him. And so he goes to prison back in the 60s. And he's given a sentence of um, two life sentences plus 20 years. And his parole date, his end date of getting out of prison was 2,244. And um, obviously, he did not serve until 2,244, because one, we're not there yet. But two, Jack actually was released in the 80s. And I think it was 86, I believe. I've got all sorts of notes somewhere. But when he got out, what he told the reporters, because they were all there lined up to um, you know, interview and see this man that had come out and a little skeptical of him you know, being God's man now because Jack got saved. He became a follower of Jesus Christ while he was in prison. And it was an athlete. He said he heard like Roger Staubach and all these different players come in. He said, I used to sit in the back of those prisons. And these are prisons that a lot of them he ran. And he, he back in the 60s, he, he ran a, a shutdown. He, he did a boycott from one prison Four other prisons shut down. They had to call like the National Guards. This is a man of like power. <laughs> and um, so he gets out and he's come to know Christ. Still doesn't quite know how he got out. He just he just kind of points to God. And he's 
he's going out and the reporters are like, so what are you going to do now, Jack? And he says, I'm going to do God's business. And that's what he did from the day he got out in the 80s until September 12, 2020. He was busy about God's business. And so I thought about tonight, what I wanted to do was honor him. We've been doing an awareness series for our more Monday nights, becoming aware of God. And I wanted to point out tonight that I want you to be aware that when God has called you to something, that he makes a way. When God has called you to something, he puts people in your life to make it happen. Whatever it is that God's called you to do, he will make a way. He has a plan. He has a purpose. He's got the resource. He's got the open doors. So just think about Jack's life for a minute. Here's a man who gets called um, by God. God says that no man can know him unless the Holy Spirit, God actually draws this man to himself. So here he is in prison, and he says, I thought Christians were cuckoo, like they were the craziest loony bins in the world. He said he used to sit in the back of those prisons and, you know, he says, I'd snicker at him. I think I, I don't need none of this mess. And then one day he heard some, I think it was an athlete, of, a really famous athlete or um, speaker. And they said something about if the best you can show for your life is a prison suit, you need a new manager. And Jack said he knew what a manager meant because he had been a musician he it was an accomplished musician, was in symphonies, like national symphonies as a teenager. He was an accomplished tennis player. He was an accomplished um, surfer. He was in the Surfing Hall of Fame. And he was an accomplished jewel thief. He pulled off the largest jewel heist in American history. And so Jack was good at whatever he was doing. But he realized at that point, all he had to show for his life was a prison suit. <laughs> And so he started thinking about his life and how he had been managing it and how he had turned his, all of his assets and, and things over to lawyers and book deals and all this kind of stuff. And all he had to show for his life was a prison jumpsuit. He's like, I needed a new manager. And so he prayed this simple prayer, God, save me. And I love how Jack says, he goes, if you were out drowning you wouldn't have to say some elaborate words to get someone to come in the water and save you. If someone sees you drowning and you say, help, they're coming. You don't have to come up with some elaborate words. Helpest thou me? I am drowning heareth in the water. <laughs> and that's what he says. You know, a lot of times when we're drowning in life or we know that we need God, we think we have to come up with these magic words. Oh, thou Lord cometh now and saveth thou me. And he's like, no, you just say help. And he said, that's what I did. I said, help God. I need you. I need you to come in my life and I need you to manage it because I stink. And probably at that point he said something else, I'm sure. And he was quite a character. But, um, you know, Jack Murphy, when he said yes to God, he went from being quite a character to a man of character. And tonight I wanted to, to just remind you that God is so good. And when he calls you to something, like he saved Jack Murphy. And he gave him new eyes to see and a new heart and new passions. And he shifted all those gifts and talents that Jack had, kind of like he did Paul. He, Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus, and then he turned all of Paul, Saul at that time, all of his energies and his talents in the right direction and got him on the right road. And that's what happened with Jack. And then, because God knows who he can use. But think about it. I bet Jack's in that prison he's doing all he can right there where he is knowing at that point he's never ever going to get out 2244 was his release date and here he is in the 60s the 70s the 80s and he's like when <laughs> you know what am i going to do i'm going to have to serve the lord where i am and he got busy doing god's business and here's one thing he always taught me and i'm going to talk about jack's top 10 the things that i learned from him and one of them is, 
If you will take care of God's business, which is what we're called to do, he will take care of yours. And that's how our Heavenly Father works. He is all about your business. And he has called you to do something. And he's a good father. He doesn't say, I want you to go do this and then sit back and watch you do it. No, he, he put people in Jack's life and he opened doors. He gave Jack a ministry. Jack was faithful where he was. He was busy about doing what he was called to do. And he didn't worry about that prison door being shut. And what God did is he opened it. He opened a door no man could open. And so I want that to encourage you tonight. Remember how good God is. Every good and perfect gift from above com comes from God. Every God gives good gifts. Every good and perfect thing comes from God. And one of the greatest gifts that God ever gave me was Jack Murphy. When he called me to prison ministry, I didn't know what to do. But God knew somebody he did. He knew somebody that I would connect with because of our love for water sports, our passion for life and people and the excitement and the fun that we could have together. And he brought us together. And I wish I could say that I had Jack all to myself. He did this with so many people. He would just wrap his arms around them and just share everything that he knew. But that's one of the gifts that God gave me. And he said, I want you to learn from this man. And as I said earlier, I've been drinking from a fire hydrant of wisdom. Uh, this is a man that in his 80s, he passed away, like I said, Saturday at 83 years old. And, and I shared that with someone that my friend Jack had passed away. And he's like, well, was he old? I said, well, yeah, I guess 83 is old. <laughs> but he was a young 83. I said, he had at least 20, 25 years left in him going full speed. And I remember last year, right here on this property, he was here speaking at our Victorious Living Banquet. And we had been at banquets. He had just flown in that day. We had ministered. I'm, I'm exhausted. And we're sitting over there in the lake house here at Lake Christie. And I, my eyeballs are rolling in the back of my head. I'm so tired. And he's going a mile a minute. And I'm trying to drink from this fountain. But finally, I looked at him. I said, Jack, I can't take any more. I got to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, you can't hang with the old man. I said, no, I can't. And one of the beautiful memories that I have from that weekend is my daughter and my son, Ty. Uh, well, Ty was gone, excuse me, in Phoenix. My son, Dalton, and Ivy. And they had some friends here with them. And I would look in the house, and they would be sitting around Jack, and he'd be telling his stories. But they had studied criminals in school. And uh, they had studied Ted Bundy. Well, Jack knew Ted Bundy. He had been in the same prison. And so Jack was just pouring into my kids. And it was the coolest thing that I'd ever seen. And he was ministering to them and witnessing to them and entertaining them. And so we have all learned so much from him. And God gave me such a wonderful gift. And I want to honor Jack tonight in, um, in more ways than I already have. And I believe that that's biblical. First of all, I want to honor and say that Jack had the prettiest feet. And you may say, that just sounds disgusting. reason I say that is Romans says, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news of Jesus Christ. His feet were beautiful. Now, I don't know about his toenails and all that. I never really looked at them. But what I know is he had beautiful feet. And they would go wherever God called them to go. And I'm sure at times they went in places that God didn't even expect them to go just because his heart was so big. I remember just a couple of years ago, it was right at his 80th birthday, he went over to Ukraine. And he's on the front lines ministering to Ukrainian soldiers, like literally going out where there's bullets flying and he's ministering to them. His book is translated on Jewels for the Journey, I think is the name of his book, and beautiful book, and it's translated in, in Russian, and people still have it. So many millions of people over there have read his book and know Murph the Surf, and he was over there, and he came back. He's like, Christy, these inmates, these prisoners in the Ukraine, they're, they're in cages under the ground, and he's showing me pictures of him looking down, and he's ministering the gospel to these men in cages. And just absolutely 
amazing. And his heart was just huge. And his feet were just beautiful. And so we're called to honor those who not only are our elders, but but ministers of the gospel. We're to honor them, but we're also called to um, to learn from them. And here's a verse in First Timothy that I, I wanted to to share with you. Well, first it says, "Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching." And this man was is worthy of double honor. First Thessalonians two seven says that. He's talking about the apostles is they had the right to make demands. And I feel like that's Jack. The life that he lived, the people that he's met, the places he's traveled, he had really, as the world would say, the right to demand people to, to be serving him. But what he did was he served others and he was never a burden to anybody. In fact, I feel like sometimes we were all burdens to him, which we weren't, but we were all the ones coming after Jack saying, Jack, can you help us? Can you help us? And and Jack just kept giving and giving. And 2 Timothy 2, 2 says, be strong through the grace that God gives you. Now teach the truth to other trustworthy people that we have taught to you. And that's what I want to do tonight. Whether you are watching here online if you're sitting in a, in a prison cell and you're watching this on an Edovo tablet or JPay or something, um, at the end of the day, that if we all take these to heart, we'll be better for it. And so the first thing I, I want to um, say is what I learned from Murph is that the new man in Christ can overshadow and overtake the old man. When I hear some of the things that are, is in Jack's past, that it's been under the blood of Jesus, which means that the blood of Jesus that was shed for our sins, it's covered it. But he had quite a past, and he's very famous for his past, for his, there's movies made after him back in the 60s, and there's movies in the works right now. And, and so you would hear, I would hear stories of Jack, and I'm like, there's no way he could have done that. There's no way he could have been a chasing after women or no way he could have robbed something or no way he could have murder charges or there's no way. And I can't believe it because I've spent so much time with him as has so many others that are watching tonight. And we knew the new man the new man and there's so many that knew the old men too and now they're new men and they're doing this new thing for God for the last however many decades and but I want you to think about your life you may have things in your past that you just wish people could forget you know what Jack did he, he never glamorized his past he shared it he shared the past he shared the, the details of it as much needed to be shared, but all for the purpose to be able to then share about how Christ changed his life. He used it for a purpose. And so right now, maybe you've got a past. Maybe you've got things you wish were in your past. God says in his word that when you come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, he makes you a new man, makes you a new woman, makes you a new creation. The old is passed away. It says, all oh, behold, all things are new. This was a new man. So much so that he ended up getting out of prison, changing people's lives. He got redirected with his passions and let that be a lesson. Where are you using your passions today? God has gifted you. Are you using them? Are you on the right track and using them for Christ and for his purposes and for eternal things? Or are you using them for yourself and for earthly gain, which will pass away? At some point in our life, it will pass away. So I just want to encourage you with that. A lot of people want to know, how can I go back and undo your past? You can't. But you can let the new man and the new woman shine for Jesus so big that when people look at you, all they see is the new. They don't even remember the old. And if the old comes up, you can share your story of how that is not who you are anymore. And you can help people who maybe have had that past. And that's what he did. He took his past. He connected with inmates all over the world, millions of them. 
encouraging them, delivering hope, and teaching others like myself how to do the same. So don't let your past be an issue. You come into a relationship with Christ and you will be made a new creation in him. Along those same lines, I had to put this one in with number one, and I'll try to go fast so we're not on too long. But I said, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And this goes in with that new man. Matthew 25, 23 says, well done, good and faithful servant. I would say that, that, that that's what God said to Jack Murphy when he entered heaven. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come and share in your master's happiness. You know, I'm really sad he's gone. But um, I'm really happy for him because I know that right now he's probably surfing, hanging tin on the crystal sea. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. A lot of us sometimes start well and we finish like <laughs> fizzle off. We get complacent. Jack was never complacent. He was always pushing us, pushing those around us, pushing for excellence. And um, so I just want to encourage you with that. Maybe you started rough. God makes you a new man. And when he does, it's all about finishing well. And I don't know about you, but I want to be like Jack. I want to be 83. Or like my friend Ralph Maloon, over 100, just getting it for Jesus. <laughs> and so that's what I think of when I think of him as a new man, a new creation that finished well. Well done, good and faithful servant. Number two lesson, and I probably already told you a hundred lessons, but nothing is impossible with God. I don't know what you're facing today. Maybe the doctor has said, um, there's no hope. Maybe the parole board has said, there's no hope. Maybe your sentence in life is like Jack's life sentence on top of life sentence plus an additional 20 for good measure in case you didn't get the first two um, taken to heart so he's like they just threw that in there to, to show me who was boss And but you know what I don't mean any disrespect God is the boss and he can open doors that judges parole boards financial institutions doctors health reports all those things say it'll never happen. Maybe because of your race, there, there, you might think that there's, it'll never happen. Maybe because of your gender, maybe because of your age. All things are possible with God. It's just about believing. Believing in the one who God sent, his son Jesus, and then believing that he's a good father. He's got your back. He's opening up doors. So you don't have to worry about the doors. And we talked about at the beginning, you don't have to worry about forcing the door open. When I went into prison ministry, at the time I was being faithful, doing what God had called me to do, which was minister wherever I was, ministering the love of God on the go, telling stories that God had put a, a certain grace and anointing on, which just means God's favor's on it and his hands on it. And so it has like, when people read it, they just aren't words. They have power. And so when I go into prison and I see this incredible mission field that God is calling me to of people that he loves, I didn't know how to get in there. But God, like, that door is going to swing right open for you, Christy. And when it is, I'm going to put Jack Murphy in your life. And then you and Jack are going to go into prisons with your water ski boat. I never would have dreamed that. One day he's like, let's take that boat in there. I'm like, are you kidding me? And next thing I know, we're in the sally port and the boat and the hull is all being examined and underneath to make sure we don't have explosives. And I'm like, good Lord Almighty, talk about dreaming big. So nothing is impossible with God. Here's a man with a sentence that he's going to get out 2,244 and he got out 259 years early. Lesson number three, focus on what you can give, not what you can get. And this is something he he lived out loud. Like I said in that verse earlier, Jack could have demanded, hey, you come work for me. I'm going to have my own big ministry. And he had a wonderful ministry, but his real ministry was equipping the saints. I'm not pointing to me and saying I'm a saint, but I am a saint. You're a saint. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, the Bible calls you a saint. And so... Um, 
Jack, he was all about pouring into others' lives, teaching us what he knew, equipping us for the journey, making disciples of nations, which is what we're called to do. And that, he took that very, very seriously. He never went in. He taught me this. He says, don't ever go in for what you can get. I go into places and think, what can I give? What can I leave there? What kind of hope can I deliver? And that's you know, really where I got this. We deliver hope, victorious living. And, and so much of that was from Jack. You got to take that hope in there. You got to, he gets, he's talked about being in prison. He says, I looked in the mirror and there was nobody home. The lights were out. The curtains were drawn. He says, I look around where we're like zombies behind bars. We're exhausted. And he said, but when Jesus came into my life, the lights went on. And that's what he wanted to equip us. And he went into prisons, not so he could get something. Most people get out of prison. He they never want to go back. Not Jack. He couldn't wait to get back in so that he could deliver the hope that he had found. He couldn't wait to take in a gift that could change someone's life. Number four, think outside the box. I can't tell you how many times he, he sent this to me in an email and he would always say, think outside the box. Think big. Dream big. He, he's one of the ones that, you know, he's working with Bill Glass and working prison fellowship and different ones doing these yard events. He would have people parachute in. He would have helicopters and things flying over. We, we go in, we have high wire acts and, and some people can knock that and think, well, you're just having a show. It's just entertainment. No, Jack knew that something different thinking outside the box. He said, we're just chumming the waters. That's what he always said. We're chumming the waters. We're using that ski boat to chum the waters. We're using that high wire act with Tino Walenda to chum the waters. We're bringing in the world's strongest man, Big James Henderson, to chum the waters, the Crevieres to chum the waters because someone's going to see that ski boat or that basketball or that high wire act and they're going to come over. We're going to use Kenny Munn's music and he's going to, he used to sing with Johnny Cash and he's going to be playing not like not knocking Christian music. I love it. But Jack's like, you don't go in and just start blaring amazing grace. Nobody's going to come. You chum the waters with the ski boat. He was just thinking outside the box. The people would come. We'd have thousands of people. I remember one of the events, I, I'm, in, I'm standing next to motorcycles and we're in there and, and Jack's got the microphone. He's bringing people up and he thinks outside the box and people came and hundreds of thousands of people have given their life to Christ because he thought outside the box. He helped develop the discipleship programs and, and the tracks that we use when we go in. He helped a track is like um, a piece of paper you hand so when you walk the, the um, plan of salvation of what the Bible says of how you can know Christ. Jack helped develop some of the best ones and he pulled from them and he, and he made them available for all of us to use and, and put our own logos and things on them and take in and, and use. And, and so you got to think outside the box. Don't just do it like everybody else. Think big, dream big, and don't be afraid to do it in ways that other people say, you're crazy. You're crazy to take a boat in prison. Hey, you never know if someone will say yes until you ask. So think big. Number five, partnerships are the key. This was the last, last email I got last week from Jack. He was connecting me with people that he felt I needed to know. And there was a real urgency in his voice. And I realized today what a gift he gave me as I've been already connected with some of these other great prison ministry leaders. And here's what he said. He said, I'm going to introduce you to these mighty men of faith. He says, back each other, share the lessons of the road, and rejoice with one another. Back each other. If more Christians would back each other, if more, let me rephrase that. If more ministries would back each other, there's no telling what could be accomplished. Because I have a tool. Jack had a different tool. Inmate Encounter has a tool. Bill Glass Ministries has a tool. 
Scotty and Jessica with Passion for Prison, they have a tool. We all have these different gifts and abilities, and we're able to all come together and praise God. Jack brought so many of us together, and and it was never about his ministry. It was always about building other people's ministries, and he's like, Christy, partnerships are the key. Work together. He says, you don't have to go reinvent the wheel. And you also don't have to march out and make the same mistakes. Learn from each other. Share the lessons of the road. And so that's what I want to spend my life doing is helping people not make the same dumb mistakes I did. And that's what Jack does. And did. His, he would call me up. Don't do this. I did that. Didn't work. Didn't work. <laughs> don't make that mistake. And so share your mistakes with people. I love in, in the in the Gospels when Jesus had his ministry, John the Baptist had his, and John the Baptist knew his place in ministry. It was to prepare the way for Jesus. But some of John's disciples didn't like that Jesus' ministry was growing, and they came to John the Baptist. They said, Jesus, the one you baptized, he and his disciples are now baptizing more people than we are, and more people are going to them. And and what John the Baptist says is, it could he must increase and I must decrease. And that's, Jack lived that. It was all about the mighty name of Jesus and glorifying him. And whether that was through victorious living, whether that was through inmate encounter, whether that was through Bill Glass um, ministries, behind the walls ministries, prison fellowship, Jack didn't care who it was through. He just wanted it to get accomplished. And he brought so many of us together he says, learn from each other, work together. So right now, if you're trying to start a ministry, I want to encourage you with that. He, he, he's like, there's no room in ministry for lone rangers. Jesus was not a lone ranger. He had a group of people with them. Surround yourself with good people that are like-minded. And let me say, the competition between ministries needs to stop because, first of all, there's enough hurting people to go around, and there's enough money to go around to fund our ministries because we serve the God who owns it all. And um, and I just love that about Jack, that he wasn't afraid to promote someone else's ministries. Every ministry leader friend that I have watching this, Jack's probably been at your banquet. <laughs> He's spoken it twice a month, two of mine. Never asking for it, Dom. This is my nightly, more Monday choke to death. <coughs> Sorry. So partnerships are the key. We're on the same team. Connect with one another and work together for the glory of God. Number six, knock on the right doors. I was reading through old emails. He says, the Murph way is to go on up the ladder to the very top, as far as you can get. Jack taught me, he says, don't be spending your time knocking on the wrong doors. If you got a vision, go to the ones that can make it happen. He was he, Now, I'm not saying go usurp uh, authority, but he knew which doors to knock on. He's like, no, no, no. If you want a yard event, you don't go knock there. You go to Tallahassee or you go here. You start there, the ones that can really give the permission, and then it's, you go down the ladder. And so there are so many things that, I don't know if that helps you, but it helped me to know which doors to go after. The Bible says seek, knock, ask. Well, you got to know where to seek. you got to know what doors to knock on. you got to know who to ask. And that was one thing Jack really, um, he would make the connections as much as he could for you, but he was teaching me how to set up these events and he would coach me he's like you've got to go here to make this happen don't be knocking on these doors so i want to encourage you with that if you've got things that god has called you to or your business or different things right knocking on the right doors and uh, don't be afraid to knock on them because as i said earlier all someone can do is say no and ain't nothing wrong with that you just keep going <clears throat> number seven go hard Never stop. Fight the good fight of faith. That man went hard. He lived large. He brought charisma. He brought excitement. He brought joy. He was salt and light to this world. And you might be tired, and I know Jack was tired, but he kept going. 
don't give up. Don't give up. Sometimes, though, I think Jack, this is a lesson on the negative side, he'd be the first to admit it. Sometimes we go so hard and so passionate that we don't take care of ourselves and we get tired and we run out of, um, we take a toll on ourselves. And I, I, I've seen that happen in Jack's life, I've seen it happen in my own life. I think when we're all passionate people that are type A and going after it and very charismatic and very accomplished, you can get going so many directions and, and so fast that you can um, not take care of yourself. And um, I don't want to say that's what he did, but I, I sometimes he did. And sometimes I do. A lot of us do that. So let's just um, remember to take the time to take care of ourselves too. Recognize others and honor them. That's number eight. I always told Jack he should have been my uh, PR person when I water skied. I said I would have had a lot more sponsors across this world if you had been the one out there selling uh, my career. <laughs> because every time he'd introduce me, it's like I had gained about two or three more world championship titles. I'm like, Jack, I have not won 20 world titles. Stop. He's like, well, how many is it? And then we'd get going, and the next time he'd, he'd say something like 25 times world champion. I'm going, oh, my gosh. But he would always just build people up just honor people every banquet I'd ever been to he'd pull people up on stage and honor them especially a lot of people maybe whose ministries have been going for a long time and maybe they were weary and tired he knew when to pull people up and make them feel like they were the most special people in the world and that they were making the biggest difference in the kingdom of God and they were and he wanted to make sure they were honored and I just love that a man that needed to be honored himself was always honoring others and serving and so as you see people in your life be sure to honor them be sure to um recognize them and don't just you know expect them to go do everything for you uh number nine this is something i had to learn shut your mouth and let the know let the one who knows what they're talking about talk as I've mentioned a couple of times, I knew God had put Jack Murphy in my life to learn from him. You can't learn if you're talking. God gives you two ears and one mouth. So I don't know who God has put in your life. First of all, you need to start looking. Also, God is, might have put you in someone's life. So you need to be looking for that too. But when they're there, you need to listen. You need to learn. You don't need to be interrupting. Just listen. And I, I, there were times I'd be in the car with him for hours and hours, and my head was spinning because I was hearing stories and facts and things that I needed to remember, and statistics of recidivism rates and all this kind of stuff and what I needed to do, who I needed to call. And I'm like writing down and typing stuff and trying to remember it all. And, and I just, I'm like, Lord, I'm trying. I'm trying to soak it all in and... But if I was talking and not listening, I wouldn't have learned near as much. And so I just want to encourage you to just wise people are, are often people who keep their mouth shut and just watch and listen. And you can learn so much from that. I watched how Jack organized events. I watched how he ran banquets. I watched how he, he asked for funding and I would just learn and I would take notes and Today, I wrote down pages of things and started printing out emails and things that he would share with me because I never want to forget them. And number 10, this is something I heard him say a million times. If nothing changes, nothing changes. He would say that in prison. He'd be preaching his heart out and he'd say, guys, if nothing changes, nothing changes. Meaning, if you want change in your life, you got to be willing to make a change. If, if, if you are in financial problems, you got to cut up the credit cards. If nothing changes, if you're going to keep going out and spending the money, nothing's going to change. If you want to quit um, drinking and, and doing drugs, then you, you might need to 
change your patterns, <laughs> change the people you hang out with, change your thought processes. You might need to change location and go to a rehab facility. Nothing changes, nothing changes. And so I don't know what you have in your life tonight, today, whenever it is you're watching that you need changed. Maybe your life feels so out of control. Maybe you feel like there's nothing but stress in your life. But if nothing changes in your life, then nothing's going to change. If nothing changes in how you look at things, nothing will ever change. And the same goes for me. And so you, that is something you just got to sit and evaluate your life and think, what do I want to experience different in my life? Do you want more peace? Then changes are going to have to be made. Do you want more financial freedom? Changes are going to have to be made. You're going to have to say no to things and yes to other things. Do you want a different life? Well, maybe like Jack Murphy and myself, you need to say yes to God. Because if nothing changes in your relationship with him, then nothing's going to change in your life. And so that was just a phrase. That was the number um, 10 that I had put down because I'd heard him say it so many times. This would be number 11 if I could keep going all night. Be a champ, not a chump. Be a champ, not a chump. And I want to read just a, just a phrase, and I'm going to close it up. This is something that Jack Murphy says. He's talking about making choices. And so this goes with number 10, so that way I'm not going to 11. It goes with making choices. You can be a champ or you can be a chump. It depends on what you decide to do. It says, uh, men and women behind bars, they don't need to be a statistic. You don't need to be a statistic. Whatever it is in your life, you don't need to be the statistic of overweight, unhealthy, um, in debt. You don't need to be a statistic of recidivating and going back to prison. You don't need to be a statistic in uh, addictions or suicide or whatever it is. You don't have to be a statistic. Like rungs in a ladder, these are Jack's words. Like rungs in a ladder or steps on a stairway, choices can carry you down into the darkest of defeat and failure, or your choices can lift you up into the light of victory, joy, success, respect, love, and adventure. My life is undeniable evidence that even when the lights go out at the end of the tunnel, when everything shuts down and living or dying doesn't seem to make a difference, when all the all that keeps you staggering and swaggering sounds just like Murph it is Murph when all that keeps you staggering and swaggering from day to day is hate pride and all the dope and booze you can get your hands on that there at the end of the line at the bottom of the pit it isn't too late all it takes is one choice at a time to change the course and quality of your life anyone can be a winner or a loser a champion or a chump from the loser's circle to the winner's trophy room of life is just a matter of choices, and the choice is yours. I love you, Jack Murphy. It's a picture of us um, and my husband, Tim. And um, I love this man a lot. And I want to sing a little phrase of something in his honor, and this is something that he had me sing this song, Oh, Happy Day in a women's facility up in North Florida. We had a thousand women out on that prison yard, motorcycles, um, Scotty and Jessica were there and different ones and, and Tanya Crevier and there we were and Jack goes, Christy, I want you to go over there, I want you to sing ha Oh Happy Day. Of course, there was no accompaniment music or anything and the only version I knew was from Sister Act that Whoopi Goldberg had sang. <laughs> And I just love that movie and I love that song. And he had me go and stand in the, kind of not in the center, but out a little bit. And a thousand women in that prison, women of all backgrounds, all walks of life, we joined hands and we all sang Oh Happy Day together. And it was one of Jack's favorite songs that I remember. I'm sure he had others. But I think it'll put a smile on your face, and you'll have to go watch the, the um, Whoopi Goldberg version after you hang up here. But 
it's just puts a smile on your face so we were, we were there he goes let's get, let's hit it christy we get the whole happy day oh happy day oh happy day oh happy day when jesus washed he washed my sins away oh happy day oh happy day oh happy day and all those ladies would go oh happy day when Jesus washed, he washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch, to fight and pray, to watch and pray. He taught me how to live each and every day. Each and every day, oh happy day, oh happy day, oh happy day, oh happy day. When Jesus washed, he washed my sins away. Jack would want you to experience that happy day. And so tonight, I honor my friend, Jack. Well done, good and faithful servant. I pray that you and I can be the light that he was and that we will take the time to pour into the lives of others, not about us. If you're an inmate, there's a younger inmate who is so lost. The gangs are recruiting them. Right now, you can be a light. You can be the Jack Murphy. If you're in prison ministry and you're getting tired, I want you to remember that there's a Jack Murphy sitting in that crowd. That's what keeps me going. Every time I go in, I think there's someone sitting there who doesn't want to be here, but they're getting ready to hear something that's going to make them a new man or a new woman. And it gives me the fuel I need to keep going because I know what this man did in his life. And so um, let's go be that light. Let's go be that just... Fill the void in this world by bringing the joy of Jesus. Honor one another. Work together. Change what needs to be changed. Give until it hurts. Go until you can't stop. I mean, go until you can't go anymore. And live well and live loud and live large. God bless you.